show can be a little gay but if you're not that's okay you can listen and have fun either way Xena Star Wars Doctor Who guests and music and reviews Game of Thrones why Nona too promise there's something for you she nerds out we're girls that like girls that like dirty things dirty things hello and welcome to the She Nerds Up podcast. Hello, my name's Kat. Hey, it's Wendy here. Hey, y'all. This is Tara. We <laughs> Tara, killed that intro, way. y'all. Well, listen, I know, it was really good. Uh, Tara coming to you live from, from a bed. From a bed. Um, I rode 50 miles on my bike today, including mm-hmm. up a canyon in the Santa Monica Mountains. Amazing. It was beautiful. Overlooking the ocean. And then you got the mountains on the other side. Um, but now everything uh, is paralyzed. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> and I stretched. And it. so I'm just, I'm good here. Thank you. Okay. Okay. She's not just in any bed. She's in my bed. In my bedroom. <laughs> in the other room. I wasn't going to Not say with it. me. So I've been, <laughs> Wendy, my cord dropped. I can get it. Wendy, you're going to have to turn on a light. I can't get up. So Look, I, I'm her errand Winnie, girl. Can you make, can I you make agreed to come Winnie. over. She did say that. I agreed to come over. And whenever I come over here, when we're going to do a podcast, we have to be in separate rooms. Right. Because we can hear each other and there's echo. So you say I agreed to come over. I, I begged you. No, I said, <laughs> no, I said, I'll, well, we have to do it. I said, but I will want to be in a bed. Because I said we have we're doing this on a Saturday, um, and it's after my long ass ride for team and training, and mm-hmm. I said if if we're gonna do this, I'm gonna be in a bed, I'm not gonna move. So I had the ice pack on me for the bonus episode. Mm-hmm. Now I've got the computer on my lap. I've got the phone balanced on my stomach. It's a tripod, so it's on one leg is on my stomach, one's on the computer, and one's on a side pillow the microphone is the microphone yes right so i have my drink handy i have a mouse here i have like 15 wires all around me Mm -hmm. very difficult to move very on top of the difficulty i'm already having i couldn't even open the bottle to my the mute that i just you know i said wendy can you make this mule (laughs) so she had to go open it and then i got all settled i got all settled i had to get it back Get in here, sitting with the pillows behind me. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I'm like, okay, I can literally not ba- barely lift things. I'm so weak from this ride. And, and then, oh, no, we're about ready to record. And, yes, my power cord to my laptop fell onto the ground. And I said, oh, no, I can't reach it. I'd have to get take all the stuff off me. Yeah. Yeah. So it was pretty funny. Lot. Wendy ran in here from the other room. <laughs> she had a couple, <laughs> couple of times. A couple of times. And I needed light because we did a bonus episode. So now I'm sitting here in this bed. <laughs> and it's the light. The outdoor light is going away. So I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, it's just going to be dark. I'm going to be like just <laughs> white <laughs> eyes in the darkness. Be amazing. <laughs> the jet come in here, turn on the light. Look, look, I know I'm pathetic right now. It's fine. I feel good about it. I did a lot today. It was a big day. It's a big ride. Big ride. I might have cried a little on the ride to <laughs> myself. Oh. So oh. nobody knows about it. Don't tell anyone. Oh, okay. Shh, shh, shh. Because it was a very difficult ride. We rode up a fucking mountain again. <laughs> and then along the Pacific Coast Highway, which if you know the Pacific Coast Highway, it's very hilly. Yeah, it's very r- it's a lot of beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's just like you go up a hill, you go down a hill, you go up a hill, you go down a hill. And you're like, where do these fucking hills stop? Mm-hmm. Why are there so many of them? When are we did done you, here? Did you see any dolphins? <laughs> oh, I thought we were there? done. No, I didn't see any fucking dolphins, cat. <laughs> oh, I was Jesus too busy. Christ. Sorry. Just angry. I was too yeah. busy breathing like. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> and we went up the mountain yes. after five miles. Okay, five miles into 50. Yeah, a little They're warm like, up. a little warm up. Okay, now you got this mountain. 
going up in the mountain took it it take it took an hour for us to get up okay uh and then you're going back down well, i was feeling good on the way back down i was i can fly oh yeah look how beautiful it is i can do anything then we get down to pch <laughs> takes like 10 minutes to get back down you know <laughs> <laughs> then all these mountains or all the rolling hills and i was like you know what fuck this mm. But you know it's for a good cause, so I'm gonna <laughs> stick with it. <laughs> I'm How sure. Right next week, I'm sure I'll feel better tomorrow. Uh, oh, we'll be right. Great. Thanks for asking, Cat. We're riding 60 miles next week. Nice. So total elevation today was about 3,000 feet, vert- mm. vertical feet. Mm-hmm. Um, and next week I think it's closer to 4,000. Ooh. Mm. But I'm not sure because we're starting in Long Beach. So I'll yeah, out. sometimes we, we kind of scale it back happen. a little bit. But we'll just think about it. Not in Long Beach, but when you ride 20 miles out of Long Beach, then you get um, to, you know what I'm saying? Then you get to the hills Palisade, and then you ride. Palisades. The Palisades. Fucking hate the Palisades. <sighs> they're beautiful. But they're but it brutal. fucking sucks to ride a bike on. So hmm. that's why I'm here. That's why I'm here that I know. <laughs> that's why you're elevated. I'm elevated. I'm my back is supported. I'm doing well. I'm recovering. Yes. Well, and, I have and, my great you know. friend to bring me to plug in my cord <laughs> and to turn lights on so I'm not you shrouded do. in darkness. So yeah, you thank you, Wendy. There. Sure. You're well, welcome. she's <laughs> so <laughs> so generous. <laughs> there was a lot of eye rolling, let me just tell you that. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, on today's episode, oh, oh yeah, I forgot are, about that. We, that wasn't it. Hey, <laughs> no, we have a killing, another killing Eve. Recap. Oh, it's so good now. We have a little bit of nerd news, <laughs> and we're gonna finally do our top ten list of things we're excited oh. about in 2022. Oh, top ten. Uh, but first, oh, I should say there's no mail sack in this episode because bonus mail sack episode. We recorded it. It's in the books. I thought I had lost the Zoom. I was freaking out. <laughs> Wendy, Wendy has a yeah, backup. Were you we're crying a little bit in between was, episodes? I like was. you thought it was gone. It's like, oh, God, we had to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to So have. much reading. It's, just so, it's so, a lot of reading. I, you know, you don't think about how reading. little you really read aloud until you start reading emails out loud. And it's yeah, like, usually just uh, at Passover is when I do most of my reading out loud. Right. <laughs> the joke is for the five people who <laughs> get the reference listening at home. <laughs> uh, but first, hey, Wendy, I got a question for you. Yes. Can you tell me and Tara and the listeners, what day is it? Saturday. Oh, you mean okay? Moving breaking on. Breaking news. <laughs> it's an old day. By the way, I will say, as an aside note, aside note, it's the day I'm watching Duke play in the Elite Eight, trying to get to the Final Four. So if I oh. yell during this podcast, it's because you know it's going well. Uh, but if you really want to know about what day it is, well, on the 29th, meh, it's not that exciting. 30th. <laughs> okay. I mean, nothing to like have fun with uh Ugh. national i am in control day so if you want to feel like you're in control march 30th oh. is the day to do it along with national okay. little red dragon day i have a little oh. red dragon. cute that's cute uh i feel like be in control day is a day i thought you're gonna crack a joke that it's my day because you're always calling me bossy well, you are <laughs> but i didn't think freaking about bossy tara yeah I mean, she's not wrong. That. Not wrong. That's why you're a boss. You are a boss in your job. Because ah, you like but, to tell people what to do. No, no, no. That's not why. I mean, it's fun. <laughs> but. <laughs> okay, bossy. <laughs> yes. Anyway, continue. All right. Well. Uh, Sorry, I didn't mean to tell you what to do. You did. I'm just <laughs> not the day pusher. for that. I'm just a button pusher. Not the um, day for that. Oh, God, April flashbacks 1st. to editing. <laughs> April 1st. <laughs> Surprisingly, it's April Fool's Day. Hey. Ooh. So hey, that's get your a kind of jokes a, ready to go. You know, yeah, that's that's not a well-known one, you know? No, that's it's a real a secret you one. You really had to dig deep for that one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, April 22nd, put your hands up for National 
Ferret Day. Oh, <laughs> you're already, you're already to April 22nd? 20, uh, April 2nd, sorry. Oh, okay. Happy Ferret Day. Happy, yeah. By the way, did you realize that the St. Peter's Peacocks were the first team that was a 15 seed in the NCAA tournament to advance to the Elite Eight, and they won the game that got them there on National Peacock Day? What? It was almost like Woo. the forefathers what? that proclaimed National Peacock Day knew in advance that that was going to happen. <laughs> Really? Yeah. That blows my mind. I'm going to stretch this out a little bit to go to uh, April 3rd because it's a day that I I like National Film Score Day. I like a good oh. film score. That's cool. Yeah. That's dope. Okay. Film well, scores coming are coming up excellent. At the end of the week, there's a big event going on in Columbus, Ohio. <gasps> oh, really? Who's going to lose? Oh, yeah. Papa yeah. Loser. Noise. So herbers from all over the world are con- converging oh. in Columbus. So have fun, everybody. Be safe. Happy a- herping. Alice and knows. Anne are going, right? And plus a lot of other people that listen. Yeah. Anne and Casey. Alice. Yeah. I can't it's wait to see the be, pictures. It's gonna it's there's gonna be so many pictures. It's Anne and, and Casey's big reunion. They haven't seen each other oh, in like really? 15 oh, years. Oh, that's like, right. Yeah. Because yeah, the goss. Yeah. They, oh. they they used to date, right? And they, now, they, yeah. breaking news. Oh, that's they what I, dating. we learned, oh. yeah. And then apparently, so now this is our first broke up with Casey. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> no, it's like, that'll be depends on who Depends on who you ask. Mm. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, man. Uh, I'm excited well, about that, to hear about this. Yeah, it's going to be huge. Yeah, I'm so uh, jealous. It sounds so fun. I know. Well, FOMO, okay, Tara. Tara. We, it's may not yes. be for Palooza, but you and I are doing something. We are. We're doing Wonder something Con. nerdy. Yeah, we're doing mm-hmm. WonderCon, which is local to us in Anaheim. So can't make it to Ohio, but we are being nerdy. Going to to essentially, yeah. it's essentially it's run by the same company as uh, San Diego Comic Con, the big one in uh, July. But this mm-hmm. is the more local, you know, smaller, less crowded. You can actually yeah. enjoy it. Well, yeah, it's com- so much Big Comic Con is pretty awesome, but this one is really fun because it is such a it's a great location, and you know, just smaller scale. Mm. Uh, yeah, I I've only been once because you know it's been shut down the last couple of years, but very excited. Right. I loved it the first time that we went, and it was so fun. So maybe we'll have some good nerdy things. Probably not as good a stories as Urpa Palooza is going to come out with, but no, yeah, you know, if you're going to Urpa Palooza. And you're willing to email us your review, please do. Let us know love to how it goes. But they, it'll still be kind of going on probably when we're recording, too. Probably. So it's true. Maybe okay. some crazy shit happens on like Friday or Saturday night. I never know. Hmm. Yeah. Yep. You know what? Gossip. Write it when you're drunk. That's when the best stuff comes. Preferably. It is. Yeah. It is. It's always the best. You should always drink before you call people or send mm-hmm. emails, <laughs> text. texts. Yeah. Because it's the truth. <laughs> your true self comes out. Because what you want to do is That's you want to drink and then, yeah, you want to tell the truth and you want to write it down and then mm-hmm. send it to the masses. Without, like, don't even think about right, it. Just, send it. Just type out all your feelings and then just hit send. Yeah. And see yeah. what happens. Like, this is a good, another good life yeah. advice from the She Nerds Out podcast. Mm-hmm. Qu- quit your job. Quit your job. A backup. The universe will provide. <laughs> then text a bunch of people exactly how you feel. Be drunk yeah. and just send. It. And just press on. That's a good strategy. Good job. That will change your life. <laughs> that would guarantee, guarantee to change your life. <laughs> One uh, way Wendy, or any other <laughs> any other days to to speak of? Are we we're good That's on the days. That's enough. That's enough of that. Okay, great. It's every uh, day's a good day. Just make it whatever you want. Speaking of being inspirational good. news from Wendy, <laughs> oh boy, yeah, let's do whatever you uh, want. Just a quick update: I am, uh, I am, <clears throat> I am reading the book uh, we talked about last time. In uh, Into Every Generation, a Slayer is Born: How Buffy Staked Our Hearts. I'm about a quarter of the way through. Oh. Tara, you would love this book. Why would I it's love so it? Good. Because you're a Buffy fan. Well, I am. You a Buffy you watched fan. Oh, that's true. I, I, yes, I am a big Buffy fan. I just didn't like, know if it was like. No, I am. I just didn't. I didn't think that Wendy almost hadn't really watched it. Yet. Yeah. yeah, it's it's great. You need to you need to you need to get it. Yeah, I'm all in. I'm very excited. It's, and if, it's a fun read. Any fast read. spoilers you can give us right now? You don't want to ruin it for anybody. 
I mean, nothing too, nothing too earth shattering yet. Ha- um, have you got to the Joss chapter yet? Well, so the I haven't got to the specific Joss chapter, but it really is the the person who's writing the book or has written the book. His name is Evan Ross Katz. He's a huge Buffy fan, huge SMG fan. So this that's who you want to write this book, you know. And he's he's talked to almost all the casts, a lot of the writers, the producers. And he, right now, he's, we're just going season by season and be like, okay, the castings, how okay. did the casting start? Oh, that's cool. What ha- like, it's just, very, it's a very in-depth look at the show and it's fantastic. So yeah, Joss is all over it because obviously, right. you know, Joss is such a big part of the show. Um, but it's great. I'm really enjoying it. Cool. Two thumbs Exciting. up. All right. Um, well, I guess that means it's time for some nerd news. Yeah, we have a, a tiny news. little nerd, nerd news today. We have breaking nerd news. Uh, this is Tara, and it in- revolves all around my most favorite girl from when I was a young person. I wrote this person one of my very first fan letters. So this was way back before, you know, like the internet would like just invent it and all that, right? Or just That's become so like a thing. So yeah. I you know, sent a fan letter, never heard back. I'm not going to take it personally. <laughs> oh, man. That's a horrible story. This person, man. like I've mentioned on this podcast before, was one of my first crushes, female mm-hmm. crushes, yet mm-hmm. also confusing because I thought, do I want to be with her or do I want to be her? Right, yeah. Very confusing. Very. <laughs> but my feelings for Christina Ricci really catapulted some of the other feelings I had already started feeling, feeling years before. So Christina Ricci, uh, the, you know, she's currently starring in yellow jackets on Showtime, which has been mm-hmm. very successful. I uh, haven't watched it, but we, I think we've agreed during the mail sack episode that we do want to watch that. Um, uh, yep. Yeah, she's also going to be starring in, the new Netflix series Wednesday, which is, is a live action uh, show around the Adams family. So <sighs> the interesting thing is I'm just going to read this article from Deadline and then I'm going to point out the interesting things because there's a okay. few little nuggets in here, All especially right. if you are an OG Christina Ricci fan. You know, I love her from, of course, Adams family, uh, Casper, uh, now and then um, mm-hmm. the uh movie she did with Anna Chlumsky where they were so gay for each other. Uh, uh, God, Bear, Secret of Bear Mountain. Um, Gold Diggers. <laughs> that was so great. Such a good movie. If you haven't seen it, it makes me so happy to think about. Oh, man. So many good ones. All right. Anyway. <laughs> this is from Deadline. Mm. This is the news Adam's family fans have been hoping for since the new Netflix series Wednesday was announced. Christina Ricci, the actor most closely associated with the title character, will be a major part of the live action show from Tim Burton. So Tim Burton is. Oh, yeah. uh, great. Uh, so that'll be interesting. Mm-hmm. Ricci, who starred as Wednesday Adams in the Barry Sonnefeld directed 1990s Adams Family feature franchise, and then she's also in Adams Family 2, with the mm-hmm. most classic ever. This is not part of the article. Scene, turkey, uh, Thanksgiving dinner scene. Have you seen Adam? It's been a while. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's been a while. Well, it is a classic where Wednesday and Pugsley are part of the uh, Thanksgiving. At, they go to summer camp. And they are part of that Thanksgiving right. dinner reenactment or whatever it is. And um, basically, Wednesday tells it how it really was. Right. What really happens, why Thanksgiving really exists and what really went down. It is awesome. So anyway, uh, I think she won over all of our hearts more than she already had at that point. <laughs> <laughs> so details about Richie's role are being kept under wraps to protect the surprise for fans. But I can reveal that she plays a new character and not an older version of Wednesday because that, I mean, how, mm. how funny would that be a fucking grown up Wednesday? It's so <laughs> perfect. It, you know, I'm sure it'll be great, whatever character she's playing, but an older version of Wednesday. Oh, I mean, I mean, that's what I want to see. I would have loved yeah. to see that. Yeah. So uh, this article is kind of written from this perspective. So it goes on to say, I hear Ricci was brought in. I'm not saying that. That's the article saying. <laughs> Guess what? That is not Tara. Tara is reading it. 
I hear Riju was brought in following. Here's a nugget. Thora uh, Birch's exit uh, amid production. Uh, oh my goodness. If you're familiar with Christina Ricci's work, as I am, Thora Birch and Christina <laughs> starred together and now and oh. then. Uh-huh. Thora Birch, also fan favorite from another project, a little thing called A Hocus Pocus, which is also filming a, well, it's done filming now, but, you know, has a, a re, I won't say reboot. It's a, it's Hocus it's Pocus. Cool. Follow, yeah. follow, you know, follow yeah, up. Follow up. Sequel. Which we we're all very excited. Maybe Danny would, you know, she played Danny. Maybe she, Thora yeah. would be coming back. But now that's been rebuffed. And there were some rumors regarding what all happened. And maybe it was, mm. you know, I don't know. Whatever. So anyway, this goes on to say, Ricci is playing a new character who is similar to the one originally played by Birch and will mm. replace it on the show. Richie quietly has been working on Wednesday for weeks. Filming on the MGM produced series is slated to wrap in Romania at the end of this month. Ooh. They went to Romania for this shit. They went Serious. real life. Like they want to go right, right find real life Adam's family. Right. Mm. Wonder if they've got like a cool castle or, I mean, mm. I know they don't live in a castle, but still sounds fun. The coming of age comedy <laughs> love that oh, written God. by smallville creators al go and miles millar are directed is directed by burton stars ortega as uh i think they did uh, mention this person's name um mm. it says oh. stars ortega is it julie ortega i don't know who this person is but i do want Gen- jenna jenna ortega. jenna ortega i'm not familiar with jenna ortega but she sounds mm-hmm. lovely yeah uh <laughs> <laughs> sure, she's great. Yes, says stars or Ortega as Wednesday Adams during her years at Nevermore Academy. It's described as a sleuthing, supernaturally infused mystery. Mm. So, okay. Yeah, kind of like some Nancy Drew uh, Wednesday Adams version. That'd be fun. Now, I'm looking at a picture of Jenna Ortega. Mm-hmm. Uh, she was born, oh, she's a Libra like me. She was born in 2002, so that mm, mm-hmm. she's 20. Mm. <laughs> so she's an older Wednesday. Okay. So older Maybe college than she... College age? What did right. it say? Sorry, in what you just read, does, does it say what? Her years at Nevermore Academy. So I'm thinking Academy. either Maybe like a high school. high school to college. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Cool. <laughs> high school or college Wednesday does sound amazing. <laughs> it I does really <laughs> wish I had her as a friend. <laughs> <laughs> either of those times <laughs> uh, awesome. oh man you that... got anybody else you just go google the thanksgiving dinner <laughs> play <laughs> with wednesday funny. it's so funny it's so fucked up but so true she just tells it like it is uh in addition to ortega <laughs> richie stars oh. alongside Catherine Zeta Jones as matriarch Whoa. morticia adams and luis guzman oh, as what? gomez adams Perfect. Doesn't that sound cool? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I can't wait to see Catherine Zeta Jones. That's yeah. That's yes. That's a great casting. Richie's performance as Wednesday in the Adams Family movies is so beloved for fans of the franchise that they launched a petition when the Netflix series was announced, calling for her to be cast in the show. But I guess she wasn't she was not originally cast. Well, maybe a little too old for the role. Well, yeah, but I if there was always was this grown new up character. Wednesday. Right. Well, if she was, well, Thora Birch obviously was playing a new character all along. So they're just basically having her fill that slot now. So they could right. have, I mean, maybe she couldn't, maybe she was busy filming Le- Yellow Jackets at the time or something. There was just a conflict that didn't Isn't open she up. like 40 years old. Uh, yeah, Maybe she, too. I looked it up. Oh, okay. Okay, okay ladies. She's ladies. about four years older than me. She's, oh no, she's only two years, actually two years old. Wait, I thought she was 42. Two. She's 42. Let's Thank you. Because I was going to say she's four years older than me. Yeah. So, uh, which I know because I always thought that four years was just a lot. <laughs> but no, not, anymore. not anymore. But anyway. But I have always uh, known that Christina Ricci was four years older. <laughs> got it. You were tracking it. Tracking it. Hoping I would catch up. Uh <laughs> Burton, blah, blah, blah. We don't care about you, Burton. We care about Christina Ricci. 
Creechy, <laughs> we Creechy you, next Tim Burton, will Academy Award winning director. <laughs> Fuck this guy. Not you know he's I'm not fine. He's great you know. I love I love your work on Nightmare Before Christmas, Tim. <laughs> love it. Uh, anyway, Richie will return for season two of Showtime's breakout hit Yellow Jackets, in which he stars. Uh, and then it goes this, on to when oh. the story came out. I saw little clips of when of her as Wednesday mm-hmm. back in the day, mm-hmm. and I I've forgotten how completely hilarious she is. Freaking perfect and have fucking perfect. hilarious, literally perfect, like deadpan. Iconic. Yeah, yeah. this is the perfect delivery of every line. Uh, completely all the, the Thanksgiving play. My friend Angie uh-huh. and I were just obsessed with. We're both obsessed with Christina Ricci. <laughs> I remember when I was first because I she Angie was one of the, the first people I met when I moved to LA, and she invited Angie, me. Angie, not, oh, not Christina. Angie, not Christina. <laughs> and Angie had invited me over to hang out. And she had, she told me this later, she had purposely put a copy of Now and Then in the VCR sticking out so I would see that it was in there because she knew how much she, that I love Christina Ricci and she loved Christina Ricci too. That's adorable. We're still friends. Very good friends. To this day. <laughs> but I just thought that was funny. She's like, I had a copy of Casper laying on one thing and I had Now and Then in the VCR. <laughs> was she trying to seduce you with Christina <laughs> Ricci movies? <laughs> <laughs> I think she had some Probably. awesome ideas, but you know, I thought, oh my god, now I'm mid. <laughs> yeah. Let me just turn the lights down, Taylor. You want some wine? Oh, what is that? Now and then? Oh, weird. <laughs> oh, Adam's family. You might over as well here. watch it, I guess. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and it's funny because oh. Angie and I lived together for a little while, and she was my roommate up until very, when I just moved, like a few weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And as we're packing up, uh, you know, I found her copy of Casper. It's just Aww. still, she just has it displayed, you know. <laughs> I love it. That's just how, how we are. Yeah. Uh, amazing. <laughs> anyway, I also have other news. I think I'm up again. <laughs> this is Tara. And... One of the things, Winnie, Winnie, do you want to go grab something to eat? Yeah, I'll be back. Look, I <laughs> on my list that we're going to talk about later of things that we're excited about for 2022 included Bridgerton mm. season two. Oh, spoiler, hello. Well, I'm talking about it because you put it on the rundown before the list, so <laughs> <laughs> so that's your to blame for that. Um, <clears throat> so Bridgerton was released yesterday, <laughs> as of this podcast recording friday the 25th um so i was so excited i've been waiting for so long if you watch bridgerton uh, if you're a fan of Grey's anatomy as i am then you're a fan of shonda rhimes so this mm. is another shonda rhimes produced show bridgerton uh there's nothing gay about it there's nothing sci-fi it's like a period it's set in you know london um but it's a different it's kind of like alternate reality london so it's not like it's very diverse so like the queen of england is black like you know so it's very diverse which is really great um it's just a lot of fun you just have to it's based off the bridgerton book series um Mm. you just have to put yourself in this place to enjoy it for what it is um Mm -hmm. but i love it you know it features some powerful women which is also kind of an alter you know it's again alternate reality so there's some uh Black Women in Power. Um, it features a, a really hugely diverse ca- cast. It's really great. Awesome. Um, and so, and that was you know, just like Grey's Anatomy, one of the goals Shonda Rhimes had was to really make it a colorblind show. Mm. So even though it's not sci-fi or gay, even though there has been some gay nuances in there for sure, and mm. none, none of the main characters so far that we know, there are like seven or eight Bridgerton children Mm. One of them could end up being gay. Who knows? Um, they're, you know, it's just a really fun show. I love it. It's really, really soapy, you know, it's, mm-hmm. but it can't, it's <laughs> season two came out last night and these episodes are like, well, the first one was basically a, a mini movie. It was like an hour and 20 minutes long. Mm-hmm. And then every other wow. episode is like an, a full out hour, no commercials. So I watched three last night until I had to go to bed to get up for this ride that I already described. I won't go back into that, but uh, (laughs) so, and boy, it was hard to turn off. It was so good. There's just so much, you know, fun drama and it's just Mm. really, 
uh, you know, it's definitely female led and female. It's just really great. I love it. It's ridiculous. Awesome. It features <laughs> modern music, but um, done with uh, like a, it's all instrumental and it's done with like a full string orchestra. So like the big one. Oh my one, God, I love that. Oh yeah, it's awesome. So you'd be like, this song sounds familiar. Oh, it's Taylor Swift. It's Wildest Dreams. That was the uh, the effing song. We'll call it that way. There was a oh, okay. there was a sexy <laughs> last season. It was like they played the whole Taylor Swift Wildest Dreams um, with with an orchestra. So Taylor wasn't singing. It was just the orchestra mm. version of the song. Okay. And it was just the newly married couple just effing everywhere. It was okay. great. <laughs> it was so fun to watch. I mean, I was like, hell yeah. It was just really <laughs> funny the way they did it and just like all right get it um Hell yeah and yeah it, it's like kind of like it it just blew up in popularity when it came out it's yeah one of sure. those like you can't stop watching so if you're yeah. in the mood for just a fun you want to watch them like old english like it's bright it's beautiful like the way it's shot the costumes mm -hmm. um it it's very, very op light opulent. it's very light-hearted so mm -hmm. Uh, it's very dramatic, very angsty. So this year, so every season, it's going to focus on a different one of the Bridgerton children. So last year oh, it was Daphne. And mm -hmm. it's like these women having to come out, you know, it's kind of like their introduction to society and everyone has to find right. a husband. It's very ridiculous. And they kind of play mm -hmm. that play into that ridiculousness of like, you know, you're basically put up an auction and all these men mm -hmm. come to, you know, find a suitor. So nice. and some each Bridgerton child has a completely different personality and the one that's you know being presented to society this year is eloise and she's just like fuck it i don't i don't know what you know she's like what i would do back then if i wasn't allowed to be out and gay and want to be with ladies like she she's just like uh, you know i'm not trying I, I don't even know what to do um so it's just a lot of fun and then it also focuses on her older brother anthony who's not married but he meets this lovely and she's from India. So um, this hmm. character and kind of he, they challenge each other. It's just a lot of angst going on, a lot of like mm. sexual tension. Mm. Um, yeah, mm. it's very, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, I'm trying to manage, low, I'm trying to manage your expectations, but it's a it's lot of low fun. stakes, right? So it's not like, it's not stressful. No. It's just fun opulent right pretty people having lots of sex it sounds like yes okay right low stakes it yeah. is it's just like it's like that thing it's kind of that you like your guilty pleasure that's what it is yeah great i'm yeah, excited about two. it yes season just two released yes Huge. do they all come out at once do they all drop at once they all drop all the at once all the episodes are there it's bingeable yeah bingeable were they bingeable so I'll awesome. be probably okay, finishing great. that in the next few days. Great. Oh. How many episodes? Eight. Oh, great. Very bingeable. Yeah. Very bingeable. All right. Well, we know what's on Tara's list. <laughs> Bridgerton. So we're going to do our top ten list. We each have our selections. There will be some that overlap, I have no doubt. And then there's going to be some that maybe... I'm sure there's stuff that none of us, like uh, there's stuff that Wendy picked that I wouldn't oh, pick. Oh, for sure. And vice versa, vice versa. So um, how should we do this? I, th I feel like there's a couple that we are all going to agree on. I'm guessing Obi-Wan is on all our lists. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right. Obi's up there. Obi's on the list. Mm -hmm. um, Real spy ever. Mm -hmm. That's okay. a terror list. That's on the roll. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, I'm thinking Gentleman Jack. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can we all agree on that? Mm -hmm. Sure. Sure. You didn't seem to. I mean, so... I'm excited. I just didn't have it on my list. I don't know. Oh, well, we don't have to put it up. Well, here. you can have it on the list. Two of you agreed. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm looking for, I'm going to watch it. I'm looking forward to it. But I'm like, if things I'm like, cannot wait for, I mean, I'm excited about yeah. it. But, you know. Okay. All right. Wendy, what's, what else is on your list? Black Adam. Okay. The Shahi. Mm -hmm. Black sure, yeah. Adam, which got pushed to October. So I got to wait a little longer. Really? Black mm, sorry. Adam. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. It's going to be like June or July. Now it's October. Mm. Boo. 
Uh, <laughs> do I give other things on my list? Or Yeah, of course. Okay. Well, also on my <laughs> list. Wait, is this a segment? Or are we just telling each other? Yeah, this is a segment. Oh, we're recording. <laughs> okay. Oh, my gosh. Are you, Tara, are you okay? I thought, yes, I thought we were just like <laughs> talking behind the scenes. No. No. Trying to figure out stuff that overlaps. We're making a list. We're okay, whatever. Look, I, I told you before, I didn't make my list. I didn't make my list, I admit it. <laughs> but I pretty much know, and I'm going to judge your list. <laughs> Great. Uh, well, if we circle back to the Disney Plus world, mm-hmm. Andor, I believe, comes out in August. Oh, Casting Andor nice. from Rogue One. 12 yep, episodes. 12 episodes. Whoa. I don't know if they're going to all come out at once or if it's going to be like a t- couple season thing, but I love yeah, the one that. and Cassie and Andor. Uh, I'm very excited about that for sure. I'm putting it on the list. Yay. It's official. All official. right. Well, now I get into my Wendy's a weirdo nerdy things. Um, mm-hmm. One more Star Wars thing. Lego Star Wars comes out. It was supposed to be oh, April cool. 22nd. Now it's That's April fun. 5th. My Star Wars game. If you've never played a Star Wars or like any kind of Lego video game. They're the funnest, and it's completely. I got my Xbox at the start of the whole pandemic thing. We couldn't leave the house because the Lego games are the most re- relaxing, fun. Just play mm. it. Your character blows up, and you just lose some coins, and you just get right back to it. <laughs> and I love them, and I can't wait for the Skywalker Saga Lego Star Wars. I have mine pre-ordered for my. Um, you console. do. Oh, you called? can pre-order it. And then uh, Switch the Switch. Nice. Oh yeah. Well, I got to pre-order them because I'm ready day of April 5th now, apparently. Okay, that's right around the corner. Right around the corner. Okay, um, and because, you know, Amy Acker's cool. <laughs> on my list is whatever she does this year. <laughs> well, she... Cause she's she's put Amy so, on the list. On, well, yeah, because that's what I look forward to. Whatever she does. 911 Lone Star's coming out. She's been on that last few weeks and she's got okay. more to go. Uh, there's a movie on the unbreakable boy. She got a little part in. I don't even know how Hmm. big the part is. It was supposed to come out March 18th and it's, I think it's been pushed till they feel like more people will be comfortable going to theaters possibly. So I don't know when that comes out. Uh, I think she's got other things going on. So always every year, what's Amy doing? I'm excited to see it. That's on my list. Okay. Also vague is because I don't know when these things are coming out or what's happening, but the next Sam S mail project which oh, I know right. he's been uh, for Apple TV. He's going to make a mini series of Metropolis, the sci-fi movie mm-hmm. that I've never seen. Yep. Anything he does, and, and he's got that Battlestar Galactica remake that, or yeah, reboot, what's that, or whatever what's that, that is coming out. I don't know. See, that's the thing. Yeah. That's why I just say Sam Esmail project because I don't know when they're coming. I don't even know how right. much he's. Uh, I don't know that he's directing as much as producing. I've heard like some sort of Law and Orderish type of show that he's putting a twist on and doing that's why i'm like i don't know whatever he comes out with that he's hands-on involved with and maybe directs you're on board all right whatever he does i'm here okay on that same note my girl one of my girls brit marling baby who got screwed by netflix Mm -hmm. uh they canceled the oa after two seasons because they're idiots and but fx has just hired her she and her producing directing writing partner from the OA Zal I don't even want to try to say his name bat man golly something uh are doing a program for FX called retreat and it's hmm. uh uh about Darby Hart a Gen Z amateur sleuth who attempts to solve a murder at a secluded retreat Cute. it sounds very basic but here's the thing Britt Marling's doing it so it's going to be it's going to be batshit more than that. Yeah. And it's awesome. <laughs> I I am on board for whatever this girl decides to do. Um and it's got like I think uh they've had some casting announcements. Um now I don't remember his name. The guy from Children of Men Clive Owen is involved and some other people and she's it. in it. I don't think she's the lead. So whenever, I don't know. I think it's supposed to be either late 22 possibly next year but okay hopefully 22 another filming uh but yeah bring it bring it brit and then my last note which i just got on board with to i mean i i saw the previews and i thought it looked interesting but i thought well let's see if it's good but now that it's getting some excellent reviews already is a movie called hold please i'm trying to find it i'd seen the 
sorry, every it's called Everything Everywhere All at Once oh, with yes. Michelle Yeoh. And I'd seen yes. the preview and I thought that looks interesting, but you never know. Is it going to be good? Sci-Fi did a, a article basically saying the first truly great genre film of the year. Rotten Whoa. Tomatoes already has it at 97%. It's Ooh. got freaking Michelle yeah. Yeoh. The yeah, trailer, it that. looks like so awesome. I don't know what's happening. It's it deals with like parallel you know alternate dimensions multiverse kind of things which i love stuff about that um and it looks like a really cool genre michelle yo sort of got some martial arts kind of stuff oh, yeah about, uh, jamie lee curtis is in it playing <sighs> a very un jamie lee curtis looking human she and i think she even said she's like i wanted none of me in there like i wanted to, to, to just be this like Take away anything that I would normally say, like, oh, I want to look like this, like to look good, you know, like, no, I'm a frumpy hmm. office worker. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's cool. But it looks fascinating, and I will get my butt to a theater to see it as soon as it comes out, April 8th. So that is wow. now on my my list for sure. Awesome. Yeah, it looks incredible. That's all I got. That's all I got. I'm sure I've missed things. Well, maybe something I mentioned. I bet it will. Will trigger, trigger your memory. Me. All right, first on my list, Stranger Things. Oh, yeah. It's the final season. Mm, I just... It's going to be epic. When does that come out? I think it's the summer. Okay. Hmm. It's going to be epic. What's I'm you... so bummed that you don't, you're not into the show. You know what? I feel I'm like shocked. you should be. I'm shocked. Because I watched the first season. I liked it fine. Everybody kept saying it, it brought back memories of like 80s and Spielberg kind of things. I don't know. I just never went back. Uh you know, and then it got even bigger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just mm-hmm. Huge someday. show. Um, when did, how many, what season is this that's going to be the last? Four or so five? Many, so many questions. Oh, I think sorry. this is the, I think Six. this is season. I didn't, I can't remember mm, how long it's no, been no, on. No. I think this is season four. Oh, okay. Really? The last, it's yeah, like four. four. It's it feels four. like it's yeah. been, uh, feels like it's been on more than that, but maybe not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, four. Season four. Um, so much fun. So many good things. Yeah. Uh, love it. Can't wait. I'm sorry it's over, but, you know, you gotta. they're going to run out of stories eventually, right. so might as well go out on top. Yeah. That's what she said. <laughs> um, the next thing on my list is we don't have an official drop date, but I have a good feeling it's going to be in 2022. <gasps> a League of Their Own. Oh series gosh. on I that is on my either, list. It's either Amazon or Hulu. Can I add it to our yes. list? Uh, yeah. And I put Girls Five Eva on there for you, Tara. Uh, Thanks for your pity. Yeah. Which drops on five five, May fifth. Five five. Five five. Uh so yeah, the series, the League Alone, God, I hope it's good. Um yeah. obviously they have a huge I mean that's that's tough to take on such an iconic and beloved movie. Now and forever, <laughs> you are a part of me. <laughs> You're gonna make me start crying, baby. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> I mean, what's uh, just thinking about the movie? You're bringing back memories, like the fact that the woman they got to play older Gina Davis. I thought that perfect. was older. I thought yeah, that was Gina Davis with, so with makeup on. Right. Incredible casting. Get out of here. Uh, yeah. So hopefully so the the show lives up to. Um. Yeah. The movie, but we we'll, we we shall be the judges of that. Okay. Next on my list is season two of Only Murders in the Building. Oh. So you like that, huh? I love I've heard it. Great things about so it. Okay. good. What what's it on? Forget Hulu. I think it's Hulu. Okay. It's Hulu, and it's you know Steve Martin. Yeah. Martin Short, and what's her name? Selena, Selena Gomez. <laughs> Selena yeah, Gomez. Even I know that cat. And, I'm not even watching it. No, she's great. And you know, they're they're they start a murder podcast. There's a murder in the building. They start a murder podcast. It's so funny. A lot of like murder podcast inside jokey's things. It's great. So hmm. much fun. I think you like honestly, I think you like it. I, Both I think it looks I would. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. I'm not against oh, it. Just just too much. Yeah. In June. But, I know it is a lot. There's yeah. there's just there's too much. So the next one that I think that you'll probably both be on board with is Jurassic World. Yes, oh, yeah. that was forget. on my list. Yeah, so sorry. Jurassic the World. list I didn't make, except in my head, that was on it. Uh, 
Um, and then I got a couple things that I know that are not going to be on your list. Mm-mm. They're both true crime related. One of them is the staircase. This is a very. It's based on a true a true crime story. Something that actually mm-hmm. happened. Mm-hmm. It's about this man named Michael Peterson. There's a multi part Netflix documentary about it. Also fascinating. The the series is also Netflix. It's going to be with Colin Firth and Tony mm-hmm. Collette. Really, get out of here! And it's going to be it's 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 supposed to be very kind of uh, uh, it it's it's presenting the story in a in a new fresh way, which is which is good because it, the story has kind of been been done before. But I'm excited about that, especially Tony Collette. I'll watch Tony oh, yeah, Collette do anything. Great. Mm-hmm. And then my my last one is the uh, the Devil in the White City, another true story. It's a based on the book of the same name by Eric Larson, and it's the story of someone a man named H H Holmes. Mm-hmm. He's a serial killer. Ah. He built a murder hotel in Chicago during the during oh the Oh my World's God! Fair. I totally know about that. I read about that. I read the Wikipedia about it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. And the cliff notes. So, they're making a uh, they're making a series out of it, and I'm uh, very excited That's about it. That's cool. Leo DiCaprio, heard oh, of them? Oh, really? <laughs> playing H H. Oh, Holmes, yeah. whoa, that's cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, so th- yeah, so those are those are my big ones. Okay. Hmm. So 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 far we have agreed upon Obi Wan, Gentleman Jack, Andor, Girls Five Eva. Jurassic no, I don't know if we agreed. Uh, I think that was a pity one. That you gave me. No, I mean, I'm excited. I, I'm too. looking forward to it. Yeah, okay. I love hacks the first one. Okay. Hacks. Okay. I'm excited. Oh, yeah, about. hacks. Oh, oh, we should put that on there. And yeah, right? who put added, that on there. especially now that they added Ming Na Wen and freaking Laurie Metcalf to the yeah. cast. Okay. I mean, That's that raises my excitement a it's lot. It's crazy. All right. I'm going to go ahead and have you put Wednesday on there. Now that Christine Ricci, mm. yeah. I'm saying, okay, that's on my list. Is it my that's turn? Terrible. That's, that's terrible. <laughs> yeah, I thought you didn't have a list. Well, I said not written down, um. but I know. All right. There are, there are three there spots are left on this list. obvious ones for me. We might not all okay. agree, but I, am, am I allowed to speak now? Sure. Can I? You may speak. Okay, thank you. A number one, a hocus pocus two. Uh, oh yeah, fair. that's fair. You gotta add that. You gotta it, add that. And yes. it comes out this year. It comes out this year. This this All October. Right. I'll, yeah, I'll put it on there. Halloween. Ah. <laughs> so I'm starting with movies here, and then I got Black Panther: Wakanda Forever. Oh, oh is that this year? Uh huh. Yeah. Mm, okay. Interesting. Then okay. one I didn't think I'd be as excited for, but I really am. Thor: Love and Thunder. Also good. Natalie Portman Those are both as Thor. Up for me. Yeah. <gasps> yeah. Oh yeah, I'm excited about. Portman, so this next done. movie is part of the Fant- Fantastic Beast uh, franchise. Obviously, I'm obsessed with mm-hmm. Harry Potter. I have just never mm-hmm. been able to get into Fantastic Beasts. I think it's because it's set in the U.S. It's just not, I don't know, something about it. Just It's not as cozy. Never, I like the first one. Yeah, yeah, the second one I couldn't get I haven't seen it. through. Honestly, I couldn't get through the whole. I mean, I tried. I just, the characters don't, um, can't really to them as much as with Harry Potter. But anyway, mm. this next one I'm very excited about. It's The Secrets of Dumbledore. So it's Jude Law playing Dumbledore. Sure. And Dumbledore's a gay. Uh, so we might <laughs> see a little gay action in there. I don't think so. You no? Know? <laughs> How gay? Like, what kind of gay action well, are we talking like about? like him being gay. Wow. I don't know. Him just <laughs> being himself and... Just okay. him being gay. Maybe, uh, I don't know, flirting with a guy? I don't know. Okay, sometimes great. that happens when you're gay. It's just you know. sure. I thought maybe no, I don't you mean meant like some like <laughs> sex scenes, sick hardcore porn, <laughs> hardcore gay sex. No, <laughs> I mean, but obviously they're gonna they're gonna have they're you know that's this is their chance to <laughs> well yeah put it put it out there. Sure, so it's me. <sighs> that's right. Uh, also, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Oh, yeah. So this is what I think we do. Can we just put Marvel, Marvel movies? Marvel yeah. movies, yes. Okay. Yeah, we're all looking that takes care of all yeah. of those. Now moving on to my television, really. Looking forward to <laughs> a Lord of the Rings, The Ring of Power. Yeah. Looking forward to Wendy, that one. What do, you, what do you think? Yeah. Does that go on? Yeah, yeah. I'm, that's a worthy. Okay. Yeah. okay. Obviously, Girls 5 Eva. We've already touched on Somewhere. that. That's yep. in 
of the Rings. I'm very excited for Girls Five Out. Um, <clears throat> then this one I didn't think I was really excited about until I saw the previews and I was like, that looks fucking cool. Uh, and it's Poe from Poe Dameron from Star Wars. Uh, Moon Knight. Mm-hmm. Moon Knight on Disney+. Right. Plus. Looks cool. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Um, yeah. Followed by She-Hulk. Mm-hmm. So again, just Marvel things. Marvel. Marvel. I'll just put, I'm, I'm just going to say Marvel. Marvel TV. Yeah. Marvel Anything movies. Marvel because they've got She-Hulk. we got Miss Marvel. So it's like, yeah. Just roll those all up in one. I think I'm also. Uh, plus Mandalorian, Obi-Wan. Yeah, those are all. That's yeah. all. So I'm just I'm just gonna put so Marvel and then instead of Andor I'm re- replace it with just like Star Wars. Star Wars. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's easy because that includes Obi Wan and Mandalorian. Really. Yeah. So. Although I don't know if we'll get Mando three this. I year. think it's I think it is coming like late twenty twenty two. Like yeah. end of the year. Yeah, like December ish. Oh, okay. Great. Do you have any more Tara on your your long? Not your that we haven't already covered. No. December for Mando 3. Oh, good. Okay. Well, I mean, we have 10 we have 10 entries on our list. Now, are there things that didn't from your list that didn't make the list that you feel are more important or more exciting than things that you see on this list now? Not if we're going to say all Marvel and all Star Wars. Yeah. Right. No, I mean my little. I mean some of my things are very me specific, so they don't need to go on the yeah. list. Yeah, There's things same, I'm excited about. Same so. to me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you got the very... big ones that you know. I mean, obviously, we're excited about oh, anything Star on. Wars or Marvel. I mean, hold on. We have. I just oh. realized Star Wars Obi Wan. We have a spot available. Hmm. If we're putting Star Obi Wan under the Star Wars umbrella, now things are about to get interesting. So that means there's one spot left. Mm. You like for Miss what? You know. Oh, <laughs> oh, hold on. How about the Nevers? <gasps> oh, oh yeah, my nevers. God! How did I forget about that? Definitely yes, the, the nevers. nevers. The Nevers. There it is. All right, add the Nevers. I think. I mean, look, if so, you held okay. off again, I'm saying about the Nevers. If you held off because of the Joss connection, give it a shot. And you know what? You got to go through the end because things get wonky. Yeah. Give it a shot. It's great it's stuff. A great, the leads, it's a great the show. leads are yeah. fantastic. The yeah. leads it really make is. it, yeah, so yeah. good. Can't wait. And season two is Joss free, so then you don't have to fill. And I season one good. was Joss <laughs> yeah. free. Uh, you know, pre knowledge of was made with <clears throat> Joss pre knowledge of everything going on. So his assholery, right? But it's a great show. It's a great show. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So okay, so we have ten. Or do we feel good about this list? Yes, I feel good about it. What is it? Read it In no particular order, right? You're reading this in a book. Okay. So we have the Nevers. Yeah. We have Gentleman Jack. We have all the Star Wars shows and movies. We're not getting any movies this year, though. Girls 5 Eva. A League of Their Own television show. Jurassic World, the sequel. Hacks. Hocus Pocus. All the Marvel movies and TV shows and the Lord of the Rings TV series. I'm just going to throw in there as a guilty pleasure. It doesn't have to go on the list, but I'll add it to my personal list. The L Word. Generation Q season oh. three. Oh. Okay. All right. It's a good runner up. Yeah. I enjoyed watching the first two seasons. Even It's like Grey's. It's just like ridiculous and you have to just enjoy it. <laughs> and and it was, I would have watched it. Yeah. I watched it with, again, Angie. It was a lot of fun. We just kind of were like, ah, oh, <laughs> lesbians. Oh yeah, that's that. Well, that's true. That tracks. Oh, that would never happen. All right. Well, that tracks. All right. Yeah. There's a lot of that back and forth. <laughs> they brought Carmen back. If they brought it. fucking Carmen back, I thought you said they did. I, I, I did too. I got a little, they, but I was like, no. Had, never. I would have watched it mm-hmm. for Carmen. Mm-hmm. God, they gotta just. Who plays Carmen again? I forget. Who's the actress? I forgot. <laughs> forgot her name. Sarah Asu. Sh- Asu. 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 Ahu. Yep. Shahi. Uh, I feel good about this list, guys. Yeah, me too. It's a strong list. Mm-hmm. Now, if we've forgotten something, listeners, yeah, please let us know. I don't think so. I feel like these are all pretty big. I've mm-hmm. looked up upcoming movies in 2022, and I didn't see anything that, uh, you know, I feel like. I feel up. like we're missing something gay. Mm. Like well, more gay, like uh, a lot of these have gay aspects for sure. Like I can yeah. think of a few of these. I have gay characters, I, but I feel definitely. like there's 
I mean, obviously, I, I said L word. That's pretty gay. Um, right. But uh, I feel like well, there's, there's gay Hallmark coming up. And I'm I mean, sure there's yeah, there's a lot of gay. Up. These are like this is like top ten though. I guess Love it doesn't classified. matter if it's gay, but I feel like there's something really big gay, really queer, you know, coming out this year. Wasn't That's there what a she movie said. that like somebody <laughs> but, um, <laughs> like there was one that God. was like uh, what's her name was producing. Uh, no, I uh, don't. Uh, it's not helping. Dang it! The funny person. That you worked with Kat at the Lucy oh, concert. Tig Notaro. Tig, wasn't she like producing or yes, starring in something? Yes, there's a movie. That, uh, Her movie. Oh, shit, what's it called? It okay, premiered you know what? Here's a thing, though. Here's a thing. So I just looked up 36 gay movies we can't see in, in 2022. Okay, it wasn't really totally titled that. But everything everywhere all at once was mentioned. So I don't know what's gay about that. Oh, but, oh um, okay. That's exciting. It's not giving any reasons why it's on. Maybe it's, I don't know. And it also mentions Doctor Strange. Oh, hmm. what? It says it will introduce lesbian superhero American Chavez, played by. It's like the name that starts with an X. Scotchital? I know I'm saying that completely wrong. Gomez. How do you say that? Really name? tried, though. Miss, Miss Gomez? Yeah, sure. Uh, but I guess there's a lesbian superhero in it, which I okay. did not know. Okay. What's and her there's name? supposed American? to be a, a gay kiss in the Buzz Lightyear movie. Oh. That's weird. Uh -huh. No, it's not weird. It's uh, great. That, I think that's great. That would great. not be the one that I guess that I would guess that we no. missed. No. Well, there might be gay a queer moments or, you know. The, right. Or yeah. gay. These are talking about gay actors, too. I, think. I, I, don't know. I feel um, like there's something Valkyrie like. Valkyrie having some yes, gay stuff. Yes. Valkyrie, maybe. I don't think she's Thor. queer or bisexual yeah. or something. Like I think she's bi. Think. Yeah, bisexual, I think. Um, so there's definitely queer characters in there. I just feel like. You think there's I'm like missing a thing. something? I don't know what you're thinking about, but maybe was it that Tig movie? Maybe, maybe, no? or maybe That's like I don't know. I don't think about. It. I'm sure it'll come up, or if our, I'm sure our listeners will let us know too. If we're missing, something. yeah, if we've missed something that you think we should be looking forward to, let us know because it's not like I mean, there's yeah. a lot. It's hard to keep up with everything. Well, here's the thing: this is the first time we've made a list. We yeah, tear yeah. lists apart. Oh yeah. So now we're we're putting ourselves out yeah, there. We're opening how, ourselves this is how up feel. to this is it. And then when people are listening, uh, you're like, I can't believe they forgot that one. Avatar yeah. two comes out this year. Ugh. I don't. Sorry, I mean, I this is Tara. The first one. I am not. I was not that impressed. You didn't like the first one? No. It's it's a, it's, it's a fun. No. Movie. There's it's so many fine. other movies that don't is take the, 10 years the, to make. And then another the 10 years, apparently. What was the, the animation? <laughs> the Muppets. The story, I could, I, the story was not memorable to me. Sure. Uh, the, it, it, I, it looked fine. It looked fine? It looked beautiful. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of, you Incredible. know what, fucking Moana is beautiful. But. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. Ah. <laughs> Can't they both be beautiful? Sure. Fair enough. Whatever. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Killing Eve. Right. Oh, I don't like how Tara, when she decides she's done. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, I don't know. We're talking about it. We're being just yelling. Because we all got quiet. Killing Eve. It's like, we don't know. <laughs> I'm just trying to move it along in the most direct quiet, way I can think of. Bad. Okay, Tara's oh, ready. Or was to it my delay? <laughs> no, no. You're can, go on. What thing. else do you have to say? Go on. Uh, I'm nothing. Let's go to Killing Eve. Okay. I just, I'm, I usually try to have a little That's... more subtle segue. <laughs> oh, hey, Killing Eve. Things we're loving in 2022. <laughs> I am loving it. Killing okay, Eve. let me tell you what. I fell back in love with this show last year when the, as I always talk about, Are You From Pinner or whatever episode, uh, that kind of mm. got me back in the show, which you haven't seen yet, Kat. And then I, I became like, I, it got me like, okay, Villanelle's cool. I got it. Cause I'm kind of like you when you were talking about when you started watching the show, like how is she redeemable? Like how can you, mm -hmm. she's just cold blooded psychopath murderer and whatever. But that episode turned me around and now I just adore Villanelle. And um, season three to me has been fantastic. I have loved everything four. about it. Wait. Hmm? Oh, three? four. Yeah, four. Sorry. Yeah. Four. yeah. The final season, which makes me sad. They're going out strong, I feel like. Um, I kind of gave a little hit 
of t- episode three last week, but I hadn't really rewatched or anything because we weren't really planning to talk about it. I rewatched mm. it again today. I took notes, copious notes. I'm not going to get into all my notes, but I wanted to keep track of everything. Uh, mm. I, you know, I mentioned how, you know, last week the big thing was, you know, uh, how Eve got villain all arrested. I also missed a huge thing where, like, so what the show right now is doing there, Eve's trying to track down who's in charge of the 12 bring down the 12 and she has met up with this woman helen i like how they, she always a helen uh who's a part of the 12 but also seems to be trying to bring down the 12 so they've got this little flirtation going and they're kind of like racing to find out who's on top of the 12 and and along the way so eve has been tracking helen and her moves and she ends up running into a woman named uh something fernanda fernanda who uh you find out helen had a fling with to try to get mm. to, uh figure out like find fernanda's ex-husband who they believe to be the leader of the 12 his name is lars mir and mm. uh so eve has this great scene where like she, she runs into this woman after she kind of overhears that she was dumped by helen and eve pretends that her lover just dumped her on the phone she's like oh, i'm so pathetic and i i don't have any friends in this town can i just buy you a coffee or a drink and she's like you do have friends let's go to the bar and so she she and this woman are drinking and she's prying into like you know she, she knew this woman had a relationship with helen and she mm. finds out helen showed up right after her ex-husband left her and then she puts two and two together and figures out lars is the uh, ex-husband that Helen's trying to get to who may or may not be the leader of the 12 mm. and um, but episode 4 this last episode it was it was solid gold to me I loved it it was um, Helen meets up with Eve they both know that Lars now is the leader potentially of the 12 and now it's like who's going to get to him first so mm. Eve and her man toy you yourself <laughs> um who's hot and cute and mm-hmm. he's funny and i like him a yeah. lot they end up tracking down you uh lars they find a picture of it. they finally search uh, the woman's fernanda's social media and find one picture that has like a shirt she was out of like eleven thousand posts like, or something so, yeah they scour all these posts them. and they track down they find a picture of she was wearing a shirt with her and him on the shirt yeah so he's not actually in the photo right but he's in the an in a photo in the photo yeah yeah <laughs> so they track it down you get facial recognition that's how they found out his name is Lars mirror or let's or they like find a picture of him, i should say hmm. um and they find out it they track the photo to like some antique dealer kind of thing it's this photo taken a lot of this woman back in the day took all these pictures and so eve's trying to find any other photos of him or information right. on like from the 70s where, when yeah. like from the hmm. seven during the cold war and all this so she tracks down a uh, another picture of this Lars. Um, so they're on they're on the hunt <laughs> for Lars Mir, who you'd think is the um, leader of the twelve, possibly. But I don't know. I don't know. I don't know yet about that. Uh, also, you have uh, Pam, who I think referred to. She's a mortician who I guess doctors up bodies that the twelve needs her to take. She's somehow aligned with the twelve, but she's just been like a mortician doctoring mm. up the dead and she's a weirdo but she's awesome and eve tra- <laughs> tracked her trying to get to helen and, but now she's she's very unhappy in her work she wants to go be an assassin she's connected with helen helen's like you're not ready you know i think that actually all happened last week but then she killed her brother and i i rewatched episode three and i think it was something to do helen finds out that someone they thought they'd killed with the 12 was still alive which we get to in episode four and then for some reason, she decides Pam needs to go work with Constantine hmm. to train to be an assassin. So she goes and meets up. They they go off. He takes her to a room. Here's where you live. You need to be accessible if you're going to do this, blah, blah, blah. He, he has her meet him at this by the water. He tells her to go push a woman off the pier. It's like, no, it's like, no, you go push her. You don't question it. Go push her off. the. That sounds like New York, but he's Russian. He's like, <laughs> um. Like, she didn't do anything. And he's like, what are you pathetic? You're not ready for this. You're just a nobody. Blah, blah, blah. Go home. Go home. You're not ready. So in this, I love that this season, they're taking time to just do random things that almost make mm. no sense. Like, she goes then to a <laughs> carnival. But I love it. It's like character. Yeah, she's just, moment. like, passing the time. She goes to this. Right. Okay. right. And she goes, like, and does the, the 
mallet to the thing where it goes, mm. thing, and, and, you know, like. And the guy's like, how'd you do that? You're so strong. <laughs> yeah. And she just doesn't say anything and walks off because yeah. she's weird. And then my favorite thing, she gets on like a <laughs> tilt the world kind of thing where she gets in a car i guess not knowing what the ride does it's Uh-oh. got this moment where she's just sitting in there and it starts spinning and she starts me like whoa whoa ah, ah, and she gets all scared then she just starts laughing <laughs> and just spinning oh on this ride and i don't know if that's supposed to say like it rejuvenated her i don't know but she's just enjoying herself at the amusement park and th- <laughs> at that moment when she's spinning on the ride i'm like oh my god i love pam now she cracks me up i like this character Nice. So she eventually calls Constantine back, who's already complaining to Helen, like, you got me, I, you put, you people put me in the spot as mayor, which we saw him as a mayor in some Russian town, I guess, at the beginning of this. And they pulled him away to train her. And she's like, no, we know you smuggled all this money from the 12 and blamed it on Paul. So Carolyn shot Paul and we know you did it. So you trained Pam. So he's screwed. If he was like, I'm not going to do this, uh, you know, yeah. and they're like, oh yeah, you are. We got mm-hmm. you. Yeah. Boy. He's yeah. Um, so Pam calls him back to the water. She, she pretends that she's been mugged. All my things have been robbed. I don't know money. Whatever. Yeah, she calls Constantine and yeah. she's like, oh, I've just been robbed. So he goes over and predictably he looks for her. She's not there. He goes and looks out over the water and she runs up and pushes him into the ocean. Whoa. And, uh, but it's like there's stairs right there. Even if she right. pushed that woman, she wouldn't have died. Apparently he, he swims out. He climbs back up. He's and it's typical constant. He's like, ha, ah! <laughs> he's doing his big yeah. laugh and uh she's like don't underestimate me she just doesn't like being oh. called a nobody and like her brother mm. was a jerk who like insulted her like you're nobody you're weirdo and so constant kind of did that and you know and and pam always said you're special like you're the little flower that no one notices but i i know you've got something in you helen so, used to tell helen, Pam. yeah yeah she used to tell her that um why <laughs> Pam has been brought into the story. I feel like there's going to be something. She's going to kill mm. someone we like or try. Mm. I feel She's like there's going a reason. to be assigned to kill someone. That something. We, yeah. Right. Mm. So I feel like there's, you know, what I don't know what the end game is with Pam, but I feel like there's a reason they brought in a new assassin at this stage of the game. Uh, mm. Ilva Nell's in jail, episode four, because Eve had her phone in jail. Um, she wants her phone call. She uses it to call Helen, who gets her out. And basically mm. tells her, is your little trying to be a good person over? Because you don't, no one leaves the 12. You don't leave the 12. Mm-hmm. It's like, I know you don't care about money. I, you know, it's not like there's anything to offer you. She's like, no, I do want money. Lots of it. <laughs> and I'll do whatever. So they get in the car and she says, here's someone, here's your next target. And it's personal. Are you okay with that? And I'm thinking, mm-hmm. oh, crap, she's got to kill Eve. Yeah. But no, no. Cut to Carolyn. Carolyn has gone to Havana. A.K.A. A- Mrs. Dursley from Harry Potter. Mrs. Dursley has gone to uh, Havana because they learned that a member of the 12, who was, I guess, someone tried to kill and torture, didn't die. But the person had shoved, cut off his toes and shoved them up his nose. Oh, no. Beautiful. So and she's the, gone. The, the, uh, this was all stitched up and fucked oh, up gross. looking. It was so messed up. Yikes. Yeah, it's gross. Mm-hmm. And uh, Mrs. Dursley is trying to get information out of him. Um, and he's not talking. He's a jerk. And he's like blowing smoke in her face. And he's like, I'll like, never talk to a woman. Yeah. Nah. He's like, oh, you know, you even way with, around a cigar. Even with like, no mm-hmm. toes and a fucked up nose. Where right. His toes have been shoved up. He's still insulting women. Yeah. So she leaves and she goes and smokes her cigar by the car when <laughs> Bill Case or sack over the head. Oh, no. Someone Uh-oh. abducts her. I don't know. As we find out, it's Villanelle, which sets up one of my favorite buddy combos in the history of anything. <laughs> Carolyn and Villanelle. I could watch. I wish they'd put them together sooner, but maybe. Mm. I don't know, because I love the two of them together. And she p- drives her to a beach, pulls her out, drags her along the sand, and <laughs> pulls the little sack off. She's like, oh, it's you. It's like, oh, crap. <laughs> well, you know. If you're gonna do it, you know, whatever. And so she goes to the car. Villanelle goes to the car and gets a wrench out. She's like, a wrench. Great. <laughs> like, mm, I, I would expect you to be more original, Villanelle. And, and Carolyn's trying, like, she's like, oh, you know, trying uh, to stall. Uh, yeah. Yeah. She's like, you know, 
uh, if you still want that job with me, you've got it, you know, and, blah, blah, blah. and she's, and then, she, and you could tell, I mean, Mrs. Dursley, what's her real, Fiona Shaw. Oh my gosh. She was yeah. so good in this whole episode. Mm-hmm. I just loved her. I love, you can just I love her. feel the desperation, but yet this character, Carolyn, it, it honestly, this episode made me want to go back and watch all the episodes just to pay more attention to the Carolyn stuff. Cause I love this character. Yeah. And she's saying, you know, Oh, you even, I, basically she kind of referenced knowing her as a child she's like oh not even i know yeah i saw you in prison but back when you were a Mm. child you were always good and when i visited you in the orphanage or something in the orphanage yeah yeah. so of course villanelle responds by smacking her in the head with a wrench yeah like Like she doesn't god she can't be dead you like you don't know if she's like she's kind of like looks at her like maybe i'll ask more questions or like maybe she's telling the truth but no then she just fucking whacks her with the wrench yeah yeah okay uh but then you come back later and Carolyn's sitting by the car with a little blood on her head and she's like oh. <laughs> she's like that was not pleasant and uh so Villanelle wants to know more about because Villanelle part of her therapist meeting from last week was hmm. was I born like this was I trained to be like this and his right. opinion is you were trained to be this that you can untrain you know because she's very confused with her feelings for Eve and he's going to tell her am I a psychopath is there any hope and he's like, I've re- I've never had a psychopath ask me like, care about it that much. They're just psychopaths. So I was like, you were mm-hmm. trained to d- be like this. You can be trained not, to- you know, maybe you can be trained not to be whatever. So Carolyn's saying, I knew you from I met you in the orphanage, which again makes me wonder more about Carolyn's background, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so how did she? I- what was she already? Knew why was she there? I still about feel her. like we're gonna get more info about Carolyn in the twelve than we know. That's gonna be a big thing. So mm-hmm. she tells a story about how. Villanelle, there was some girl in the orphanage that she's like, she made you mad for some reason. Who knows? But she had a bracelet and Villanelle wrapped it around like her finger to where when she woke up the next morning, it was black and rotting off. She lost her finger. And Villanelle's response was uh, that she just wanted to see it. (laughs) So, and so Villanelle was just like, so I was always like this. And, um, Carol was like, yeah, because you're fantastic. You know, why, why, waste your time trying to be good just be good at what you're good at and killing mm-hmm. is primal killing is part of human nature you know it's like don't be ashamed of it you're good at it mm. um so then like well before you kill me are you hungry do you fancy a sandwich because i'm famished and so they go back to carolyn's um she's in havana in a safe house she was sent mm. to go track down the guy with the toes up his nose so they're <laughs> they're there and they're having a nice lunch uh, there's a a housekeeper or whatever who comes with the house so carolyn says mm. which was in the previews for next week so i'm a little fearful for her future yeah um she kind of like cooking, she's yeah. fine with all the killing and the torturing she's just doing her job well, apparently she's doing a fantastic right. Got job um, Got it. cook some lunch uh it's very <laughs> pleasant and then carolyn drops the information about the guy from the 12 in the other room and uh, introduces villanelle to him who promptly just <laughs> He's laying there. He's got his toes bandaged up. And of course, first thing she does is start messing with him. And I love it. She like starts messing with the toes and she's like, oh, oh do you mind? It's and so then, hard oh, to good. watch. It's squeezing the toes. And then he oh, says, so she smacks him in his busted nose. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, shit. That was, that was hard to watch. It was gross. But uh, <laughs> and she's like, you know, what do you want to know from him? And it's like, you know, his contacts who assigned it, who told him to do this, whatever. Um, so um, Villanelle decides to get the info and um, she's like, you can go. And she's like, good. And so she, Carolyn leaves. Now, whether Carolyn just huh. gets lucky, whether she's just the, a master manipulator, I don't know that Eve really even wanted to ever kill Carolyn because I think there is something Villanelle questioning everything right now. But mm-hmm. so right. Villanelle interrogates the guy. Oh. I found out a tall Yes. Let, let's just say how she gets that information during her like mm. lunch before with Carolyn. Yes. Carolyn uses a, um, a what, what, what do you call it? It's, it? like, it's a like a piece of that wire. You cut cheese. Right. And you cut, you wrap it around and then you pull yeah. them apart and it slices mm-hmm. the cheese. Mm-hmm. Well, that comes back into play. Yeah. <laughs> it's an important way that well, Villanelle gets the information she is watching. My for. first thought would be, oh, his wiener, but no, it's his fingers. <laughs> mm hmm. 
<laughs> um, but it's Bill and L, so you never know. And when I first saw exactly. her doing the cheese like that, I thought, oh my God, this is how she's going to die. But luckily, 100%. she didn't. Yeah. So Bill and L has it like around, and you don't see it. You don't see as much as you feel like you're seeing. And right. Bill and L's questioning mm. him every time he won't answer, whatever. It's like, <laughs> there's you a just finger. See his and she's like, what really... where can this go with nostril? Yeah. Oh, oh he was God. great. She puts he it up was great. Oh, so well, bad. she kind of puts it near his nose. Mm. Um, she up. finds out a tall woman. Tall, big woman tortured him. So we're thinking it's Helen. You know, I don't know if it's mm. Helen or somebody else out there. Um, mm. But she also finds out the meeting place with his contact in the 12th. So she and Carolyn, and it's somewhere else in Cuba. It was in Havana. They, some night bar, restaurant, whatever. Uh, mm. So they go. And I love it. They play truth or dare. Um, you know, Carolyn's like, you know, do you believe in God? Because Villanelle had gone on this religious thing. She's like, how do you know everything? <laughs> um, she's asking Carolyn about her, <laughs> how her father was a gay spy. She's like, yep, a gay spy. And just, so they're, well, I think so, she said something like, yes, he had a thing for the penis. Yes, <laughs> a pashal for, for, uh, for the penis. And Villanelle's like, pashal. Okay. I'm like, I, the two of them together were gold. And yeah. I loved every minute of it. And awesome. as they're having this chat, um, a man walks in that Carolyn sees and recognizes. Lo and behold, it's Lars, the older version of Lars. Mm. And she's like, Villanelle's like, who is this? She's like, someone I used to There's be with. There's just like the great slow motion moment. Yeah. Where like he oh God, recognizes yeah. her and she recognizes him. So yeah. mm. he runs. He's like, well, he, of- no, he, he turns around and he, because That's he true. sees them and he's like, uh, and he turns yeah. around to walk back past them because he has to do that mm. to get out. Yeah. And then Carolyn says, I thought you were dead. Mm, yes. Because she hasn't seen a picture of him like Eve has because they're doing separate investigations. Right. And she right. was like, because he was like you. And then she said, I thought you were dead. And then he just bolts out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Which, Bye. so he runs out. Pops no, he, and then Villanelle goes, some, uh, should I chase him? I chase him? <laughs> and then she's like, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Villanelle chases him out. He runs by this thing, like this, he shuts this gate where Villanelle can't really get by it to get him. He runs out, hops on a scooter, runs away. He does not have the look, feel, or power feeling of the leader of the 12. So whether this is really he doesn't have a bodyguard or, or no, <laughs> yeah, he doesn't strike weird. me as and he leaves on a tiny scooter. <laughs> yeah, so it feels very wussy for the leader of something as big as the twelve. Mm-hmm. So who knows if he really is? But um, after that, they go back and um, uh, Carolyn, like Villanelle, asks, like, so is he part of the twelve? And Carolyn almost has this look like, of course he is. Um, she's like, I need to kind of lay low or bust that, whatever she says. But she's going to Berlin and asks if Villanelle wants to go, which she doesn't go. But Carol, mm-hmm. they have a nice moment, too, where she's like, right before she saw Lars, she'd ask for a dare when they're playing truth or dare. And uh, so um, Villanelle's like, you never did your dare. So she dares her to play air guitar, which Carol. <laughs> this just like, like later no, back at the silly. house. Yeah. Right. Back at the house later. She's like, you never did your dare. And so. uh so she's like, I dare you to play air guitar. And Carolyn's like, that's silly. She's like, that's the point. It is supposed to be silly. It's like, no, 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 no purpose. So Carolyn, it's, and again, one of these nice moments where she ends up doing this crazy air guitar. It's just like a nice character, fun Cute. moment between mm-hmm. the two. And then she starts to leave and, and Villanelle's like, Carolyn, I'm sorry I tried to kill you. And <laughs> Carolyn's just like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so she's, she's packing to go to Berlin and Vlad calls, which I think has been her contact through all this, like the bald older guy, whatever that she talks to, but it's ringing and she throws it in this water and a song's playing that, um, it was like, it's, it'll be over soon. Or what was, I, I wrote it down. It won't be long. It won't mm-hmm. be long. Like, and Tara, I, when I rewatched episode three, they had a moment random all it was was carolyn looking very somber kind of staring and the same song was playing Uh, it won't be long so i think they're really sort of putting a little foreshadowing on the end of carolyn which i hope not Mm. she's i love her character but they're they've had the same song twice with moments where she and even when she looked at the phone and she just threw it in the water like almost like she's wrapped like she knows the end might be near she's gonna she's not gonna play by anybody else's rules she's just gonna do what she needs to do and that yeah, might yeah. end up being 
you know. All uh, she wrote. Mm. Well, so cut back to Eve. Um, Eve and Helen have had this uh, little, you know, weird flirty thing. And Helen calls Eve and says, come over. I got news. So Eve goes over and Helen's like, oh, well, I was just uh, about to take a bath. Make yourself a drink. So Helen goes in, gets in the bathtub. Huh. And Eve, being the new Eve 2.0 or whatever, goes into the bathroom with her. Yeah. Hmm. Helen's in the tub with her leg dramatically just out of draped the proper beautiful side. tub draped over the Goodness. side mm-hmm. shaving her legs and eve they're talking and she grabs her leg talks about being bold oh and she asks why like she starts shaving her leg she's like why do you do this and helen talks about finding these you know mousy women or helping them be who they can be like being assassins mm-hmm. or whatever and <laughs> at some point eve I guess when they're talking about bold women, she starts unbuttoning her blouse. Like she's going to get in the tub with Helen and it's all sexy. And it cuts to an overhead shot of the like two of them, like knees up, in like the a t- yeah. straight cut. And they're in the tub and Eve has this look like, now what? And like you hear the squeaking of the feet on the tub and they're like, oh, if you don't like, okay, let me put my legs here. And it's just like the most awkward, like, I don't know how to position ourselves. There's nothing sexy. And Helen looks so awkward too. Like, Amazing. How are we supposed to sit in both sit in this tub? And and Eve was like, "This is so uncomfortable." And then Helen's like, "I made soup. Do you want some soup?" She's like, "I love some soup. I love some or whatever." So then they next thing you know they're sitting on the couch eating soup. It was like this seductive <laughs> bathtub scene that ends up being like hysterically funny. Of I don't even know where to put my legs. And they're trying to maneuver. <laughs> they do not fit um, in there. <laughs> God, it was so funny at the time. So here we get to the end where it's like even Helen. And they're eating their soup and Helen drops it. She's like, oh, by the way, what was the news you called me over for? And Helen's like, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Eve, our Villanelle is in prison. I got her out. She's she's out now. And he's like, oh, crap. Now what? she tries to play cool, but you can tell she's like, oh, shit. Shit. Yeah. And then they have she's she's like, like, oh, <laughs> Eve's, Helen starts talking to her about passion. And like people think passion is whatever, but it's really suffering. Like you're passionate. You suffer for whatever you're passionate about. And mm. and and he makes a comment like you love this. Like you love like the whole fact she's telling her about Villanelle being out, knowing that they have this thing and like you love this game, whatever. Um, and then all of a sudden uh, Eve kind of moves in i think helen helen said something to the fact that like you love this you know the whole eve and uh, villanelle and the passion and the game or whatever and eve ends up kissing helen and then i, I you know i think that she, she said like, what if i do that kind of thing yeah or like you have no idea yeah. or something. oh that's and, right it, yeah. was, it was like she's like, like, like you have no idea and she kisses her again and then it's in between this it's cutting to villanelle still in havana like kind of looking wistfully out like wherever <laughs> And to me, I interpreted then Eve kind of backs away from Helen and has this look like, no, I just want villain out. Or yeah. like, this isn't, I, I do not want worth this it. game. And I do have this passion. And, <laughs> You're and not, like, she's and it's not just, worth it, right? Right. Yeah. It's just for villain out. Mm-hmm. And she leaves. So, wow. you know, mm-hmm. um, I feel like there's so many random, like between Pam and... Helen and Helen's trying to get to the 12 and who Lars is he really the head of the 12 and what's happened with Carolyn and Eve Villanelle how are they gonna end up I am so wrapped up in this show right now I'm loving it as much as I did since the first season mm-hmm. it's incredible it's been so good and the writing is so good and so rich and this last episode was so the music choices I thought were fantastic um hmm. yeah I'm loving killing Eve and I'm sad there's only four episodes left going to be packed mm. with stuff. So I still it don't know Eve and Villanelle. I don't know who's if one or both die, but I, I put money on Carolyn's not making it out alive. <laughs> which makes me sad. She's, she's yeah. a great character. And I really think I might watch it from the beginning. Hmm. I love all the A lot of what I love, because I feel like one of the seasons, like season two, they didn't delve as much into the 12. And I, that was a big part of season one that I loved. That like even mm-hmm. Villanelle were sort of part of the story, and the twelve was a big part of the story. And then I feel like it kind of was so focused on even Villanelle. But this season's been great. I love it. Awesome. Four more to go. Four more. Four more. How's it all gonna end? <laughs> no. Villanelle. And I like the way all, they all say Helen. 
Helen. Helen. Mm-hmm. Not Helen. Helen. Yeah. And she's like a woman, mom with a kid, you know? Right. But she's like, oh, that's like how she got. And stuff. That's how she got uh, Eve to come over. She like, she was like, what was her daughter's name? Like Chloe or something. She's like, Chloe's that's not true. home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Last time Chloe kind of was a buzzkill for her. <laughs> And I like how, too, when she talked to Constantine and talked about, like, no, you, you've got to do this because you're being blackmailed. And they're having this mm-hmm. big conversation about killing, training an assassin. And she's, like, making a crown that I assume is for her daughter. Right. <laughs> she's, like, sitting on the bed. And he's all trying to pull a power play. Yeah. Right. He's like, I'm not doing that crap. I don't have time for this. And she's like, oh, I love how you think you have a choice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. While she's crafting a crown for her daughter. Amazing. Yeah. Good stuff. Man. Yeah. Can't wait for you to catch right. up, Kat. I know. I'm uh, hopefully by next episode I'll be caught You gotta up. at least Thanks. be caught up by the time it ends. I know. That's doable for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. You've got four know. weeks. Yeah. I'm on it. Mm. All right. Good stuff. Sandra O's gold. Mm-hmm. Judy Comer's gold. Mm-hmm. Everybody's great on this. <laughs> that's all I got. Great. Yeah. I think that's, I think all, that's all we got for this that's episode. All got. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Oh, did it. oh my gosh, I forgot about the basketball game. I they won. Duke up. won. Yeah! Well, they were up like 15 last time. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, going to Final Four, They're cutting four, baby. down the nets now. <gasps> I can't believe I forgot about them. Congratulations. Look, it's a great story. They lost Coach Krzyzewski's last home game to North Carolina. Now, how do they redeem themselves? Go win it all, baby. And at least they're getting Pretty to the good. Final Four. Nice! <laughs> Go oh. sports. All right. Uh, Twitter at Snap Snop. Wait, what? At Snop Oddcast with one D. Facebook and Instagram at She Nerds Out Podcast. She Nerds Out at gmail.com and She Nerds Out.com. Uh, message, voicemail, buy us a beer, catch up on all the episodes. Mm-hmm. Carrier pigeon. Or if you like to send pigeon. us something tangible, you can send it to. <gasps> Snop, P.O. Box 6732, Burbank, California, 91510. Rock on! On that note. Why do I say on that note? I don't know. Because it's just now. Now, yeah. Okay. It's a thing now. Okay. On that note. She nerds out. out. She nerds out. We're girls that like girls that like dirty things. Hey. Uh, he did it. He did it. Yay. Oh. I do. Go mm, mm, mm. get it, Krzyzewski. Cut it down, baby. Cut Keep it going. down. Yeah. It's his last year, Cat. Coach K. Coach K. Going out of bang. Final four, baby. Win it all.